We are now live on Facebook. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, Rochester. So this is uh, Rochester Police Accountability Board. We are um, giving a, a press uh, press conference this morning to discuss some incident that we were um, reviewing last night. And before I get started with a statement, I am going to introduce uh, the board members as they are. So I'm going to start with the Police Accountability Board Alliance seat one. This is board member Daniel Tucker. Thank you. Uh, PAB seat, PABA seat two, our, uh, Reverend Arlene Brown. <clears throat> I am PABA seat three, I'm the chair. And uh, Dr. Celia McIntosh is PABA seat four, she is the vice chair. Uh, we have uh, City Council Chair East, uh, Dr. Robert Harrison. We have uh, City Council uh, Chair Northeast, uh, Ida Perez. And we also have um, uh, Council City Council Seat South, uh, Reverend Matthew Nikoloff. And a mayoral seat, uh, Reverend Dr. Ricky B. Harvey. Okay. And so Seat I'm Northwest. Oh, and seat Northwest. Did I not say Northwest? No. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now read the statement of, of what we uh, witnessed last night in our, um, in our meeting. So last night, uh, the Police Accountability Board reviewed body-worn camera footage of an arrest made on Portland Avenue on Monday, February 22nd. The footage shows a male officer attempting an, to arrest a woman who he believed may have stolen items from a drugstore. After a brief conversation where the woman checks the woman's, or the officer checks the woman's purse, excuse me, the woman runs with her three-year-old to a nearby storefront. The officer tackles and pepper sprays her as another male officer tries to pull the child away from her mother. After the woman is placed into the back of a police car, the officers confront a bystander who is filming the scene. One officer tells the bystander to, quote, shut the hell up and get out of here, end quote. With the child crying un inconsolably and screaming for her mother, an officer restraining the child persuades another to use a car to block the child from public view because, quote, it doesn't look good that I have to restrain like a three-year-old, end quote. While one officer says a call was made to the family and crisis intervention team, another officer says, quote, they are not even logged in yet, end quote. The footage does not appear to show any crisis team arriving on the scene before the woman was driven away in a police car. The Police Accountability Board is disturbed by what it has seen. These are troubling parallels between this new incident and the one on Harris Street that occurred just a few weeks earlier. Both incidents involved Black mothers. Both involved Black children. Both involved Black people obviously in crisis. Both involved officers using pepper spray on or around a black child. Both appear to have not involved the person in crisis team, the family and, cri the family and crisis intervention team, or mental health professionals. Both involved police officers doing nothing to effectively deescalate the situation. Both involved apparent intimidation of bystanders filming the incident. Without the courage of those bystanders who were willing to stand up and hold police accountable, both incidents may never have been brought to light. What is most troubling about this incident, however, is this. The two officers involved here were also involved in the earlier pepper spraying incident on Harris Street. A month ago, we launched an investigation into the policies, practices, and procedures involving the pepper spraying of a nine-year-old. These same policies, practices, and procedures are at issue in the video we saw last night. For weeks, we have asked the city to provide us with RPD training manuals and slideshows regarding the use of pepper spray, the handling of children, and people in crisis. For weeks, we have asked the city to provide us with all training manuals and written directives that govern the use of the person in crisis team and family and crisis intervention teams. For weeks, we have asked the city to provide us with full disciplinary training histories on the officers of the officers on the scene, including the two officers involved in both Harris, the Harris Street and Portland Avenue incidents. The city has never provided us with this information or a host of other materials we've requested. If the city had done otherwise, our investigation and any resulting proposals for change may have prevented this incident from happening. These disturbing incidents prove that Rochester Police Department needs to fundamentally change its organizational culture. 
This incident also affirms our community's call to fundamentally reimagine public safety. To help make these changes, the city must fully cooperate with all our investigations. The city must also immediately release all body-worn camera footage of this incident. Finally, there must be a public meeting with RPD leadership to discuss how we can work together to keep our children, our neighbors, and all Rochesterians safe. We will now take questions. So with that, I'll be looking to the attendees list for questions. Uh, the first question will be from David Andretta. Um, give me one moment to elevate David to panelist. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Great, thank you. Uh, David Andrietta with City News. Um, will you be releasing the body-worn camera footage and how did, how did you receive it? Um, we will not be releasing the body-worn camera footage because it is not redacted. Um, we received it from um, a, a President Loretta Scott, City Council President Loretta Scott. Um, just a quick follow up, if you don't mind, what what, what uh, leads you to believe that the incident could have been prevented had uh, the city council, the city complied with your requests for the information that you were seeking? Uh, does another board member want to take this question? Board member Brown? Yes, we believe that had we had an opportunity to speak with the uh, police officers talk about some of the culture, cultural changes that need to be done, and the compassion and concern that they need when they are addressing people in the community, it would have helped. It possibly would have made them aware of some of the things that they're doing when they're interacting with people that may have become the norm, that the they may not see how the community sees how they are addressing things. Thank you. Chair Wilson, do, yes. do, we have, do we have a follow up on that from any other board member? Yeah. I guess in addition to that, um, just being able to uh, look at the current policy as is and being able to um, review, you know, what exactly was in that and maybe there could have been some potential changes. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to pull. Next up is going to be uh, Berkeley. So give me just one second. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good morning. In your opinion, what should the police officers have done in this situation? Um, I'm gonna allow another board member, I'm gonna ask another board member to address that because I know we have a lot of thoughts on that. One of the things that we would hope to see from uh, the police department would be sensitivity would be empathy, especially when children are involved. There was a call to come to uh, the place of business and when they got there, the person was gone and we would expect to see more empathy. That was a three-year-old involved in that. We would like to see whatever the policy is. One of the, one of the policemen stated, this is how we handle things. And in doing that, a, a mother was thrown to the ground in the presence of her three-year-old child. And so what we would like to see is the handling of things being handled in a way that shows sensitivity, in a way that shows that the officers are trained and that they are there to protect, yes, the businesses, but 
the citizens as well. So we would like to see more sensitivity shown, especially to the black and brown communities. Um, I would just like to add um, definitely de-escalation. Um, we know that that's been a topic of discussion, but def definitely seeing how um, de-escalation is done, improvements in that. Board Member Tucker. Yes, um, I believe I would have liked to see the officers investigate a little bit more before throwing the young lady to the ground and doing everything that happened. In the footage, um, the just investigating a little bit more, just going off of what Reverend Harvey had stated, the police were called for a specific reason because the young lady didn't do something. But by the time they got there, the young lady had already had gone. So I, it wasn't, I didn't understand what was the reason for them going to that extent because the reason they were arresting her, there was, just investigate a little bit more. I digress. Board Member Brown. Yes, when the, the officers were originally called because the store thought that she had stolen something. She's walking down the street. She sees the officers approaching in the car. She starts to run. They stop her. They look in her purse. They say, the store says you stole something. She said, I don't have anything. She then opens her purse and takes everything out of her purse to show that she does not have anything in her purse that belongs to the store. It should have stopped there. It was the officer's action from then on that escalated the situation, clearly putting the mother and the child in stress. It was the kindness of a passerby who was concerned when he saw what appeared to be the officer chasing the woman with the car. She's running, he's driving down the street behind her. He chose to stop and photograph what was going on because he had concerns for the woman's safety. So he was the one that photographed her being thrown to the ground, so photographed her being handcuffed, screamed at, and totally disrespected for what appears to be nothing. It seems as if when the lady was running, she was trying to get into a store which would have been a very safe place for her. Possibly, and this is just a guess, because she did not want to be stopped outside where there were no other witnesses. Okay, Thank you, Board Member Brown. I think um, Reverend Nikoloff had a question or comment. I think how we'd like to see things like this handled ties back to the first question, which is that we would hope that without having to be have a press conference about this or having footage leaked, the supervisors of these officers would have recognized after the first incident that perhaps they're not, their behavior showed that they have some more training or perhaps some more work to do before being in a situation like this again uh, within a few weeks. And so for the police department to police its own culture to be aware that we need some more sensitivity training around children. We were just in the news recently and there was a public outrage because of the way this was handled we would like for officers and their supervisors to take that seriously. We would like the, those officers not to be the ones responding to this case again and have officers who are trained, uh, whether they're officers and or social workers and others deployed so that this kind of incident does not have to be uh, escalated to the point it is. I think regardless of the details of this case, that should just be a basic um, assumption so that people are not treated like things, but like human beings. So I'll, I'll have the last word before we move on to the next question. Um, um, I know that we can, you know, we can talk about the close proximity to the the mother and the child as they're being uh, torn away from each other as and um, while the officer is also pepper spraying the mother. One of the things I do want to say as well is um, it is never okay to intimidate a bystander. It is never okay to intimidate a bystander. And we saw it in the Hare Street incident. We saw it in this incident that it is, there's a tactic being used in both incidents where 
you know, if I ask for your address and your name, then all of a sudden you don't want to have anything to do with our scene. That is not okay. May, may I ask a follow up question quick, quickly here, yes. Connor? Um, so I have not seen the video yet. Um, when the woman was tackled, was her child in her arms? I can, I can clarify that. Um, it's the body worn camera footage. I wanted to say there's about 20 pieces of footage that we received um, from different angles. One of the pieces of footage is the most clear of the incident is from a security camera. Uh, and that security mm -hmm. camera appears to show uh, the mother holding onto the child with one hand at the time that the pepper spring incident happens. But I wanna say this appears, uh, I wanna mm -hmm. emphasize the appears. Uh, but that's what it looks like. Um, thank you, Berkeley. Um, and just before I move on to the next question, I just want to mm -hmm. clarify the quote about the officers saying, this is how we handle this. That was something that one of the officers on the Portland Avenue scene had said on Harris Street beforehand. So I just wanted to just quickly clarify that. Um, and thank you, Berkeley. I'm going to move Berkeley back. Next up will be Seth Voorhees. Yes, good morning. Um, my question is, have you had the opportunity, any of you, to speak to the woman? And I also want to know, uh, if you know, was, was she charged with anything? Um, and specifically, was she charged with anything to do with, with shoplifting or taking items from the store? We have not had a chance to speak to the woman and I don't know if we can talk about charges. Connor, can you answer that please? Uh, what I can say is, is that an email that we received from the chief of police uh, says that the uh, woman was quote, charged with trespassing and issued an appearance ticket as the store confirmed she knocked a number of items off of the shelf and refused repeated requests to leave. And just to, just to follow up quickly, um, you, you, there was also a mention of uh, two of the officers being involved in, in the incident on Harris Street. Can you describe what their, what their involvement was on Harris Street uh, and, and and specifically what they're, you know, what, what it is you're accusing them of doing in this, this latest incident, what their role was. So I just, I just want to be clear. Um, I don't think that the board is accusing. Uh, we're just describing what we saw. Um, I want to make very clear that, uh, you know, we have not determined that any specific office officer is guilty of specific kind of wrongdoing. We have not pre prejudged that. We are describing what we saw. Um, and just to the, uh, I'll let Chair Wilson, if you wanna have me or another board member answer about what we saw on Harris Street versus what we saw here. So I will, I will just say briefly that we saw um, that the officers involved in the Portland Street incident and the officers involved in the Harris Street incident, one officer was involved. Um, my belief is that they were involved in uh, bystander intimidation. So I will say that and I will um, open up the floor to the rest of the board to respond. And what I will, the only other clarification I have is that a lot of the detailed questions that folks are answering need to be resolved by the city releasing the body worn camera footage to the public as soon as possible. So that uh, folks don't have to take our word for it, but that you can see it for yourselves. So I think a lot of the de more detailed questions we might hold off on, but Chair Wilson, if there's anyone else that wants to say anything on this one. Otherwise, thank you, Seth. I'm gonna put you back in the, uh, list and we're going to pull up Patty Singer next. Hi, thank you, Connor. Appreciate it. So it sounds like um, the offices tried to do things that now the community wants them to do, call FACET, call for some mental health support on this. FACET, according to what you said, was not available. Um, is it still 
part of the protocol for the pilot program that RPD cannot call the PIC team, even if they feel that is necessary. Chair, can I answer this? Yeah, please. Uh, so I want to be clear, we don't know yeah. about, we, we have not seen any call records. We do not know who was called. All we can know is what officers said on the camera and what we seen, what we saw, we didn't, did not see any crisis intervention team arrive on the body worn camera footage that we saw. All details about what calls were made, uh, who actually showed up on the scene, the city needs to release that information. Um, and we don't know answers to questions uh, like the ones you posed, Patty, about, you know, if and when these things happen and whether or not officers were doing the things that the community asked them to do. Well, we need more uh, information. Commissioner Lyman Torres has confirmed at least a couple after the Harris Street incident that PIC cannot be called by RPD during this pilot phase. How would the PAB use its powers to change that pilot phase? Because if, if these officers knew that they could call PIC, they could have brought that in. So is some of this a failing of the system that we're trying to change? If FACET's not available, if RPD can't call PIC, tools are being taken out of the officer's toolboxes, not being put into their toolboxes. How can you help rectify that? Um, I, I guess I can jump in on this if that's okay. Hi, Patty. Um, so I think uh, from my standpoint, I think we need a better understanding of what each of these different teams do. Um, and once we have a better uh, education on what each body does and kind of who they report to and what their role is and who RPD is able to contact, then we have a better idea of policy um, and if um, some of those um, processes are being followed effectively. But I, for me, I think I, I even need a greater understanding of what all these different groups do and how they receive the calls. Um, yeah, because I think some of them possibly may be underutilized. Um, there may be um, some difference in varying different degrees of education, but I can't really speak to 100% of that if we don't really know exactly what each of them do and their role that they play. So I think I need a greater understanding on that. So I hope that helps clarify. Reverend Nicola. As we said last night at the meeting, another thing that one of the powers of the PAB is to hit what's in our name, accountability, transparency. We're we are using our power now in order to provide transparency and accountability to the community. So in addition to continuing to do our work on our end to make sure that these policies are reformed, um, anyone who's disturbed by these things should be calling up their elected representatives. They should be calling up uh, the folks at City Hall and saying, get this going. We wanna see it. We demand it as the community. It is the power of the community. Um, to hold elected res um, officials responsible. So we will do that from our end. Y'all can do that at your end. And the sooner that we all make it clear that this is something we not only want, but we expect and we demand as the citizens of this um, city, the sooner that um, our elected officials will respond. Chair, I just wanna add one clarifying point to uh, what Dr. McIntosh said. Uh, first, two things. First, we're gonna have some board members who will be leaving the call because they have to go to work. So I just wanna notify people of that. The second is Patty, all the things that uh, Vice Chair McIntosh was saying she wants to learn about, those are specific things we've asked the city for information about and we have not been provided with that information. And this was weeks ago, we asked to learn about how the PIC team works, how the police officers engage and do not engage with FACET, very, very detailed things. The city has not provided us with the relevant information. By releasing this the way you are, is this a, an attempt to, you, you got this, you said from Loretta Scott, it didn't come through city, through the mayor or through RPD. Is this a way to try to exert more pressure to get what you want from RPD in the city to release things more by, by having this out without the public being able to see the body cam footage for themselves? Is this uh, trying to um, use the power of the PAB to, to move the city, move RPD in the way that you want it to? Have I settled, do you wanna answer that? So yeah, so, our, our role, as, as Reverend Nicholas said, is accountability and transparency. So our purpose in doing this is that this is information we believe the community should know about. That's why we're doing this today. Um, in terms of the, the city, I, I think something that people might not know in the community is that legally the city is obliged, the legal department of the city is obliged to represent the police department. They are their client. 
So when we request things from the city, their concern is protecting the police department. And therefore, part of the delay, you know, in, in getting materials is that interest they have and that concern they have in, in terms of the police department being their client. So uh, I think that all, this is also something that the, the just citizens should be aware of and, and, and part of the difficulties for us in obtaining these materials. And the last, Chair Wilson, can I just clarify? Can I yep. um, agree with everything that Rabbi Settle just said? What I'll also say, uh, Patty, is that you know the board watched this footage together for the first time last night and immediately chose to have this in part because um, you know it appears that this footage has been known about in the city government for over a week. And so you know rather, because we don't have the resources right now to redact you know hours of footage on our own, the choice was to you know communicate this public as quickly as possible in the hopes that, the full footage that should should have been redacted will be released immediately. Uh, and so, with that, I think I'm going to move. We're going to move to James. Did the, mayor, did the mayor see this video? Do you know? I I I yeah. I, I cannot say. Yeah. Right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Patty. One second here. Next up is going to be James Brown from WXXI. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Who did you ask for the manuals? Was it City Hall? Was it uh, was it the police chief? And and um, I I'm surprised that this is uh, that you don't have access to all of the manuals now, uh, at least prior. Uh, we're we're surprised as well. So you've asked for manuals before and haven't received them. I'm take I take that as. Yes. And um, so I just want to say our first letter of request, we made that public on the day that we sent it. It was back in January. That was to the chief of police. Um, our follow-up letters were to corporation counsel. I'm happy to provide those letters to anyone who needs them uh, if, you, if you haven't seen them. Um, so, you know, for example, on February 16th, we sent a very, very, very detailed list of all the information we needed to corporation counsel, including listing the specific, you know, manuals, PowerPoint presentations, those kind of things. And we still have not received that information. So did you ask for all of them or just specific ones? We asked for all of them regarding certain topics. Um, and what has been the response? Was it silence? Was it, uh, did they, did they, was there a polite email back? What, 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 what was it? What did they say? Chair, do you wanna, do you wanna do this or would you like me to? Um, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, what I'll say is, is that, you know, for the initial periods, there was, I'm going to do a brief timeline. You know, we asked for information. We asked for it within certain deadlines. The information was not provided within those deadlines. Um, uh, after some phone calls from city council, we, re we received redacted body-worn camera footage of the Harris Street incident. And then we received um, about 26 pages of PDF reports, many of which were of the Harris Street incident, which were, you know, many of which were redacted, missing pages. Um, and we did, and we were provided with general orders and training bulletins regarding some of the subjects we we're looking into that are all available on RPD's open data portal. Um, but, you know, there are many written directives as we've come to learn through the Daniel Prude investigation. There are many, many, many written directives that are not available on the open data portal. And so we, and you know, we knew that we hadn't been given any training manuals or PowerPoints, and so we followed up again uh, with uh, Tim Curtin to to ask specifically again for all of these things. Um, the city's reply to that was an email asking, you know, saying that they believed they had provided us with all the information and that they wanted to have a meeting with us. Uh, last Friday, you know, we had a meeting with uh, you know the mayor, Tim Curtin, some other people. Um, uh, that meeting, again, we presented all the specific information we hadn't received. 
uh, a lot of the response was you're assuming that there's documents that exist that you know we haven't provided you. We explained that we know that there's documents exist that haven't been provided, many, many of those documents. Um, uh, after that meeting, the, the city suggested that there needed to be some kind of memorandum of understanding in which to provide us with information, despite the fact that we have legal powers that are that the Corporation Council said is there's no limits to our requests to ability to request information and have that information provided. And so, you know, after that meeting, we received some emails from the city regarding the incident on Harris Street, but those emails were missing documents, were missing emails that Corporation Council determined to be either quote irrelevant or quote confidential. And so, you know, despite repeated attempts to, you know, converse with the city on this issue, we still have not received the documents that we are looking for. I know that was a long answer, James, and we can follow up afterwards if you want to clarify that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do have one last question on on a slightly different topic. You said earlier that um, that you feel like you didn't get this soon enough, that you weren't notified. Um, there's a lot of incidents, there's a lot of body worn camera footage. What instant, what footage and instances do you want to know about and how soon should you know? I would imagine it would be pretty hard to go through all of it and make sure you got it all immediately. So I would, I mean, you know, we talk about an incident uh, that happens in the city. You're right. You know, we, you know, and we need it. We need process, right? We need to have um, that that goes back to our ability to um, get the budget that we need so that we can process these these incident accordingly. You know, we don't, um, we have, we have Connor Dwyer Reynolds, who is executive director, and you have the people on the screen. And we need to be able to have the budget to be able to process complaints and to be able to review body camera footage and to be able to have investigators and, you know, the list goes on. But again, folks, the thing is that, you know, we have, we have uh, patterns of behavior within the, um, the Rochester Police Department that is concerning to us. And, you know, we, um, you know, we are, we really need to have this uh, be taken care of urgently. Um, I saw board member uh, Brown's hand. Yes, the other thing is, if it had not been for the concerned citizen who took the video and posted it on Facebook, we probably would not be having this conference because none of this had been made public until a concerned citizen put it out there. And that allowed people to know that the incident happened and follow-up is being done. Thank you. I just, James, one last thing before we go, I just wanna um, uh, clarify about why in this instance, the Police Accountability Board should have received the footage because city officials knew a week ago that this footage existed. And the fact that the Police Accountability Board wasn't notified, despite the fact that we have an open investigation involving some of these same officers, involving these same topics, um, the, 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 the footage should have been handed to us. Okay, so with that, I'm going to allow James to go back. Next up, is, I believe is gonna be News 8. Andrew. Hey, good morning. Can you guys hear me? Good morning. Hey, um, well, actually, I'm glad board member Brown brought this up because I wanted to ask about that. This was brought to our attention because of a Facebook video that was forwarded to us. You sort of touched on it there, but maybe even expand on the role the community can have to assist the accountability board. Um, speak up if you see something reach out um share what you see even if you're not sure um what it is exactly because at least it gets the conversation started so maybe just have some uh some board members elaborate on the role that, that the public can can play in assisting with the, the pad um i'm gonna i'll just respond real quick before i let board member tucker respond you know you know one of the i think you know out of the the video was disturbing enough 
but to see the, um, the fear in some of the bystanders' eyes when they were filming, despite the fact that they were afraid that they still filmed anyway, was heartbreaking. And, you know, um, I, you know, I would encourage people to film safely, right from a safe distance. And, you know, they, if you see something, you know, say something, you know, the reason I, um, the reason why, you know, it was brought to my attention was because I saw it on somebody's Facebook wall. And you know, again, you know, we have, we have folks, you know, community really works well here and we've got, you know, popcorn, you know, people doing, Hey, did you see this? Did you see that? You know, but that shouldn't be, but that's how things have been working. So um, board member Tucker. Yes. Um, the community has been such a huge, has played such a huge, huge role in getting this information out. In both instances, the Harris Street incident and as well as this incident as well, bystanders have played a huge role. And at times, I don't think the community understand the importance that they play in getting this information out. Um, learning about this through Facebook and seeing videos on Facebook from um, community activists, that's, it's kind of disturbing because you want to see it from them, but you also kind of think that, you know, the information should be brought to the board's attention another way. However, I just constantly just want to, I want to express that community member, people in the community, it's really important, the work that you're doing, activists, the work that you're doing is extremely important. Um, definitely film safely, but I also want you to know that the filming of these incidents puts the pressure on the Rochester Police Department. And we've seen it. This isn't something that we're assuming. We've actually seen it. The bystanders, they feel that pressure. When they're filming, it's like, oh my God, someone's filming. Let's get their name. Let's get their address. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen to you. So it's really, really important that you, the community knows, continue to film, film safely, content, continue to film. It's definitely helping us out and helping the community out with getting these type of incidents, the, the publicity it needs. Because if there were no bystander, who knows if we would have ever found out about this. Correct. Board member Perez. Yes, as uh, can you guys hear me? As um, again, I want to you know re reiterate what everyone else has said as, as far as people filming bystanders, filming knowing their rights, right, and and not being intimidated by what police may be saying to them. Obviously, film safely. I think what disturbs me the most is when children are involved in these type of incidents. Um, I hold children very close and dear to my heart as an early childhood um, director and have been in the early childhood field for, for many, many, many years. In fact, Danielle Tucker was one of my preschool students um, when she was four years old. So that's how far my, my commitment to young children goes, um, especially when children are involved because we all know that there's no police policy regarding children um, and how to protect them and how to address them. And obviously we, we saw that on Harris Street you know, we saw it now again with um, this incident at Portland. Um, you know, obviously we should record anything that we're seeing that we think that is disturbing or alarming and concerning, but especially when it comes to children because there's no policy right now in the police department that really protects children and how they're handled as well. Board member Brown. You're on mute. Yes, thank you. The community's input is essential because we all want the same thing. We all want a safer, better Rochester for all of its citizens. And for the community to step up, it helps make all of us much, much better. Um, and by the same token, when you see people who are doing positive things, let's post it. Let's talk about the positive because Rochester does have some very good things that are going on. 
But in order for all of the citizens to feel safe, not to feel intimidated, uh, not to be afraid to call the police. There was a small incident with me. Someone hit my bumper, a young black man who didn't, I didn't give me his insurance information. And I was going to call the police and I thought about it. Am I putting his life in danger for this small incident? That should not be. I should feel, as well as the rest of the community, that the police are there to help serve and protect us. We should not be afraid of them. Whatever happened to Officer Thunder? Where did he go? And how can we bring him back? Chair Wilson, are we going to take one last question before wrapping yep. up? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, final question is actually looking forward. It was a week ago today, um, I spoke with Connor about a meeting with city officials regarding the Harris Street incident. Um, and while that was happening, we now know that this this footage was had already been recorded. Moving forward, what's your hope from city officials about how information is being released. Are you satisfied so far or, or what can be done better moving forward? So uh, as we've kind of pointed out through this meeting today that we are definitely not satisfied with the information that we're getting and the way we're getting it. Um, our hope is that there will be a clear line of communication where um, we are able to get information in a timely manner. And we are also hoping for um, no uh, barriers in our way to receiving information within a timely manner. So, and I will let, um, just for the sake of time and to get to other questions, if there's one more board member that would like to elaborate, uh, please go ahead, just make it short. I think that's it, Chair. Okay, thank you. We've got two more questions in the queue from Rebecca Rafferty and Darian Lehman. Do you wanna address those before we leave? Okay. Um, Andrew, thank you for those questions. Okay, Rebecca, you're up next. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, do we know which officers were involved in this most recent incident? Connor. We're not gonna release the names of the officers involved in this incident. Uh, but uh, we encourage the media to reach out to the Rochester Police Department. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Rebecca? That's all, thanks. Okay. okay and last is gonna be from Damien. Hey, Darian, go ahead. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I have one short question and one more elaborate question. The short question is, do you know, um, or is it possible to tell from the video, how many officers responded to this call? It is, it is a little difficult to count. Okay. And more than two though? Yes. More than the two named? Yes. Yes. Um, more than 10? <laughs> It, 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 it's honestly hard to know. Okay. You know the, the body worn camera footage that we saw lasts at least for over a duration of roughly 40 minutes, maybe to an hour. So okay. it's hard to know who's on the scene and who's not. I'm sorry, Darian. All right, thanks for that. Um, and then the other question, um, you say in your release the two, that two of the officers involved in the February 22nd incident were also involved in the Harris Street incident less than a month earlier and suggest in your release there's a pattern of behavior here. Um, so uh, my question is, what is your understanding of the status of any uh, uh, in internal investigation or uh, discipline uh, resulting from the Harris Street event um, with respect to those two officers? Um, and does the PAB have, an, have a position on whether that internal investigation and um, discipline was uh, adequate, um, you know, without, without, you know, asking you to go too much out on a limb? Uh, you know, the, the underlying question is, is, is it your position that um, a different uh, reaction from the department could have uh, prevented uh, what, we, uh, what you saw 
in the February 22nd uh, body cam video. Chair Wilson, I think there's two points there. One's a specific one about the information about the disciplinary proceedings and the other is about if there should be something changed. Do you want me to take the first you know, specific fact question and then have the second question asked by board members? Okay. That sounds good, yep. Darian, the, the answer to your first question is we requested all files regarding the internal investigations into the officers on Harris Street. We wanted to see who was disciplined, who was not, and the just department's justification for why before having any conclusion about you know, anything about discipline. Because we haven't received that information from the city, we can't comment um, on that. Uh, Chair Wilson, to the question about whether or not you know, an RPD response could have changed something, I, I, I leave that up to you and the board. So, so the one thing I'll say is that, you know, um, any, you know, number one, you know, the PAB, we keep saying about how we need to be able to do our jobs to investigate, to ask questions in a way that's going to, um, you know, to, to do what we're supposed to do, what we've been mandated by the city to do. And, you know, I wonder if, you know, had, had there been, um, had, had we been able to do that, you know, what chain reaction would have happened for actual positive change here? And, you know, it starts with one, you know, it starts with us, you know, asking questions. It starts with the city asking questions. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, like we talked about community, community getting involved, you know, I wonder, you know, with community involvement and with the PAB, you know, doing its job, you know, what would have happened with this incident ever happened at all? So that's the only thing I'll say about that, but I invite other board members to respond. No other, no other response? Okay. With that, that's Chair it for Wilson. me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, with that, Chair Wilson, do you want to get this out? I know we have to wrap up. We do. I suppose I'll just, I will just thank um, all of the members of the media for attending. Chair Wilson, I don't know if you want to have any other thank yous. No, I just will say thank you to the community. Thank you for the people that have been asking questions, that have been calling city council, that has been calling the mayor's office. You know, folks, again, you know, this is what you voted for. You voted for a fully functional PAB, and that is what we are coming to you with today, that we are, um, we are working behind the scenes to make sure that happens, but there are barriers to that. And because of that reason, you know, we have, we have many things to address that we cannot. And how does that, how does that sit with you all? Are you okay with that? You know, we are, we are here to uh, reimagine, fundamentally change uh, the way we are policed in the city. So let's get to work. Done. With that, I've, I've put my uh, email in the uh, text, bot, uh, text panel for any reporter's questions that we didn't get to. Feel free to contact me. Uh, otherwise than that, the board won't be having any further statements today about this. Um, thank you all for your time. And with that, we will be going, we are no longer live streaming on Facebook, um, and I'm going to have the uh, attendees leave.